Howdy folks, here, AKA Boo, uh, man, AKA, welcome to another Sound of Adventure Vlogs. If you've never been here before, please hit that subscribe button. If you wanna follow along with some guy doing stand-up comedy, going to gigs, to mics, to bombs, to crushes, to all that fun. Just checking in, how are we doing? Let me know, I'm doing good. I'm getting income, I'm happy about that, I need it. But my scheduling, oh boy. I have my schedule already in a month in advance, which is actually kind of great when you think about it for working, you already have that time in advance, but whew, I have to get on top of gigs, let me tell you. A month in advance is actually really good to be getting gigs, but I need to do that. Today, this vlog is gonna be the most important one. So far, this one is very special to me. This one is all about the writing process. Yes, I am going to reveal how I do my writing process. It's not hard, it's not complicated, but this is a system I've been doing since 2009. That's, it's 2022 now, how many years is that? Since 2009, I try to record every single set. Some sets are missing because I forgot to hit record or whatever incidents that was, or the battery died, or I've had my notebook stolen before, so there's like blocks of jokes missing as well. But when I started recording my sets, I used this. My little digital recorder. Beep. I've been doing comedies before smartphones and everybody records their sets on smartphones, but creature of habit. Ever since I had a chance to get this, I always use this. You can hear it every single set. You see me bring it up there. You'll always see it on a stool or I got it hiding somewhere. That's just how it is. Every single comedian, no matter what, record every single set. So important to record every single set because you might have all your jokes memorized, but incidents happen. Some people, they're so good at remembering what they said. Me, no. I am so in the moment, stuck there in my head. So I have no, I, I mean, I know what I'm saying. The audience perspective, when we're performing as comedians, if you are really good at under, like listening to the audience, which you can, it's so good to record your sets so you can sit as an audience member to listen to your jokes. And that's how I write, plain and simple. People ask like, how do you come up with jokes? You know, what do you do? They have to hit me. And then I have to sit down and write that. I always carry ink and paper on me wherever I go, no matter what, so I can write down any ideas I have. I put it on the phone to see if it works. Some people, they can go on adventures, they can go live life, and they can sit and write about all those experiences. For me, I try, but it just doesn't work out. I have to be doing random things. Driving is the number one activity where I always think of jokes. It just happens all the time. I have to pull over and write down things constantly. So what I do is write down things, try them on stage, and then I listen to those sets and that's how I, I edit. And if I say it a certain way or if I added something, I'll write that down. Plus, if I came up with something on the fly, on the cuff when I'm on stage, I wanna make sure I remember that so when I record my set, I can also remember what I said and write that down word for word. Since I have tinier jokes, I have to work them over and over and over and over again. They always constantly change. So at the end of the year, when I record all my sets, I tally all the jokes at the end of the year and I see which jokes are the strongest and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you all this process. So I have one set that I recorded at open mic at Boomtown Brewery. We've been there already before. I'm just gonna play the set, listen to a couple jokes, tell you kind of the process. I do it on three, three things. If the joke gets no laughs, I don't write anything. If it gets a weak laugh, now this is the biggest spectrum because it can get majority of everybody to laugh, but like, yeah, that was funny. Or it can get one person to laugh. And this is where y you can definitely argue my process if it's good or not, because that is the wider range of the weak laugh. And that's why I call it a weak laugh. Then I give it an L, I give it a laugh when everybody laughs. The whole room laughs, but they're laughing a little bit longer than that. Like they have two or three laughs where it's like, ha 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 ha. I got some examples that we're gonna find. So let's jump into this. Oh, but first, before that, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on some of these jokes and tonight we're gonna go hit an open mic. We're gonna go to Liquid Zoo in Van Nuys. I got a couple of bits that we're gonna kind of, you know, I got jokes that I'm working on right now that we're gonna go try. And then maybe I think I got one or two on the set that it will go try again to see if it's gotten stronger since the last time I recorded this set. So let's get down to business. Stand up comedy is really hard, especially for me, for a lot of people who first start getting into it and do it and pursue it for many years. So writing is very important. If this helps anybody, I'm very grateful for it. If it confuses anybody, please just leave any questions down below. I'm very happy to explain. Hopefully I will get this out 
where it's understandable. So let's get to work. So the first line of business, what I do, I find out what date it is. That says 2722. So I write that down. Then I write down where I was. Boomtown, downtown Los Angeles, California. And then we listen. Thank you. One more time for Nick. Keep it going for Nick. Clap for that gentleman. So I just got to give it up for the host. I don't claim to be smart. I just tell women I'm into, into sexual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Thank you. Almost real laughs out of real people. I appreciate it. See, that one was kind of hard because I'm not writing any laughs on that one because they're kind of cheering in the intro of the joke and then I it kind of sounded like some people were laughing in the back even though I kind of announced almost real laughs but it didn't get enough for a weak laugh for me. Some young lady's like, hey, how do you kiss with your mustache like this? <laughs> See, there's just like one laughs. As a single guy, I like going to airports because I feel like they're looking out for your sex life. Please report any unattended packages. <laughs> Never realized airports are the best wingman. <laughs> See, airport joke is a little, I have an act out and then I do the boo-ha with the second line. So technically it's kind of two jokes, but I put it together as one. I usually don't grade it until after the boo-ha, but when they laugh at like the setup or stuff between it, I still add the weak laugh in there, so. I try to dress like a skater so women think I'm poor. <laughs> so when they find out I have a car, they'll be head over heel flips for me. <laughs> big response, but not a, that's not a big laugh. I can't wait to not get rich doing this. I'm scared to get rich. You can overdose on bills. <laughs> no laughs. And then at the end, I put five minutes. All right, this was not a bad set. I obviously screwed up my handwriting there. Second joke right there. Mm, like they kind of cheered for it, but it wasn't that many laughs. So then everything else kind of had everybody chuckle a couple times. Only like one or two laughs here. Dare overdose. That one didn't work. I mean, you can. I think you can kind of hear, but to me, not enough. Not a bad little set. The scale of the room has a lot to do with the scale of the laughter too, as well. You know, if everybody laughs, but it's a small room, it's like eight people. You can't be like, oh, that's a you know, you crush. That's a big laugh. You should count that. But every room matters. No matter where you go, you have to just put it all in its realm in its you know just whatever scale or whatever system helps for you i had to go far back to find a really big laugh we had to go back to september the tiktok joke big laugh that sounds like this my friend's like why don't you on tiktok mikey they like stupid comedy no i don't need a bunch of little kid followers when i look like i follow little kids <laughs> See that one, that was like maybe like four seconds laughter afterwards. So that one right there, that is considered a laugh. Those are the type of reactions that I like to get more than anything. You have to acknowledge those. Those are different from a weaker laugh and those are different from obviously no laughs. That was a good one. So that's it right there. That's how I do it. Record every set, scale of one to three, how much time it was. Sad over, 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 sad over. Then at the each year, I write them all down. Then I tally them. I'm a little far behind. I'm on 19 and I'm still working on it. But look, at here's the, just to show you how many times I tell jokes, how little times I tell jokes. Like one time, old person phone. I can't remember what joke that was. No laugh. Moved on. But then some work. A lot of laughs. Even though I got one no laugh, no big laugh. Okay, some of these you tell so much and you hope for everything. And then at the end of the year, and I tally and I see which jokes are the strongest and then I move on and which jokes are the weakest. And then I think about if I can kind of bring those jokes, the weak jokes back to bring more life to them or I let them go and I move on. 
and I take the good jokes and I stash those away and make everything else better. Comedy joke analytics. This is just my process. I just want to give you a little glimpse into it because it's a lot of work and I like it and it's a lot of fun because then you get to see all the notebooks that you collected. Just to give you an idea of how long I've been doing this and how many sets I have. That's a composition. There's 200 pages on there. Look at that, that is so many sets. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22. You can maybe say definitely over a thousand sets recorded, documented, and I have them all stashed on a hard drive. So if I ever need to go back and look up jokes, which I'm gonna have to do here pretty soon because I can't remember old jokes. I'm gonna have a process where I'm gonna write down every single joke of mine because I keep forgetting the old ones, even the bad ones. Look at that. That is a lot of comedy sets. Let's go to the first one. You guys want to see? 2009, my first one. Ha ha cafe, pastor punchlines. I still tell that joke. Ugh, look at no laughs, no laughs, no laughs, no laughs. Bass Pro Shop got a big laugh. I still tell that joke. I know. Some of these are hundreds, so, because they're college ruled. White ruled, I hate white rule. I want the college rule. So this is all the work. I get happy that I have this much work. Oh, so much comedy lifting the weight of silence. Is it helping me? Maybe, yes, I believe it is. You have to believe, you have to convince yourself that it's working. I love it because it's more work to do. I don't encourage people to do that. Some people can remember what they said in their set. Some people just need to listen to their set once and kind of just like, okay, figure it out or take highlights of you know jokes that they like or little things that they did. There it is, the process. Hopefully it inspires you. Hopefully it gets you to write more. Hopefully it finds you to organize your material. Obviously this one is just for the comics, but you know, if folks want to get a little insight on how it works and what the process is, that's it, right there. It does seem like a lot of work and doing the stand-up as well, then I'm doing the vlogs as well, and you can see we're trying to do podcasting as well, so I'm working my tail off for you to be part of the feel-good business, to make it in the funny business. I truly love it. I really do. I like that there's a lot of work to it. And the more effort I put into all the work, it's rewarding. You have to find any kind of little rewards for yourself. If you're doing comedy analytics or if you just wing it, whatever. I'm just trying to share my advice, trying to share my philosophies, trying to share my experience. Because yes, I just reached 14 years of being an open mic comedian. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know, 14 years, you're welcome, congratulations. It's fun, I'm happy. Let's go hit that open mic tonight and let's get these jokes stronger. What jokes we're gonna work on tonight? I'm gonna work on War Black, Off Market, Art Broken. And then the one joke that didn't work, I'll try Overdose. And then the one joke I wrote down that I haven't tried at all, I'll tell it to you right now, we're gonna try that tonight. The only thing I like to follow on social media is my nightmares. Here we are. Liquid Zoo. This is seriously the longest running open mic in LA, for sure. The longest bar open mic. I know some clubs have open mics have been longer, but when it comes to bar comedy, the liquid zoo. Look at this dive bar. This is the diviest of the bars. You didn't think, was the front even a, a door at one point? Probably was. Yeah, definitely probably was. Thought I was getting here early to put my name on the list. Wrong. What number was I? Number 18? 17? I don't remember. Ugh. Yeah, this mic doesn't start for another 30 minutes. And so then I gotta wait, I don't know how many hours till I gotta go up. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. All right, I remembered some of the jokes. Actually, I don't remember the jokes. I'm gonna have to go back <laughs> and watch myself. I know Heartbroken is one of them. I'm gonna try Following Your Nightmares. I think Overdose. And there's one more. I should just look at my phone like I'm supposed to do. Cause they're all phone. That's where they go. I don't remember, but I'm gonna watch back right now and I'll tell you. The other jokes was Off Market and War Black. I'm gonna try those jokes. Just giving you the titles right now. So hopefully when you watch me go up there and I try them out, you will uh, you'll get the titles matching to the jokes. Really early. The list is very full. There's not even 20 people in the, in the bar. There's another comedian walking up. Go sign up. You wanna... I heard the list is outrageously long. I'm about to say, you already want to guess which number you are? 
<laughs> We're all excited about it. There's gonna be a bunch of comics here hanging out. I signed up Daniel Vargas, my roommate. I'll have him talk about maybe the writing process. Just get other couple other comics, you know, perspectives, and maybe I might reveal to them what that what I do. Daniel knows what I do. I've I've shown him the work a bunch. I can talk to him about it. He'll tell you what he thinks about it. Anyways, all right. Well, now we just chill. Right now, I could be going over my set. I kind of already have what the jokes I want to do, but I'm not going up for another two hours. So. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. So, oh well, that's fine. I got Wendy here, Wendy Wilkins. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Mikey. How are you? Let's get better light over here. I'm doing a whole writing process, hold for plane. Writing process, Wendy. Yes. What's your writing process? Just, you know, in 5,000 words and less. I'm not one of those write every day. I, I can't be forced to write. Um, but what I do find is every day there's something that either reminds me of an old thing that happened that was funny that I can shape into a joke or I just will come up with a joke based on something that happens or a thought I had or some experience. Um, like the that. best is when I wake up and I have a joke that's fully formed in my head. That happens quite a bit. And it starts with like, I'll have a premise, like maybe the day before the night or oh, okay. a couple days I before. I thought you just wake up with new jokes. I do sometimes though. What? And then, it's but amazing. my brain just sort of when I'm sleeping will have me come up with the joke fully formed and I have to immediately write it down. If I don't, it goes wow. away. Um, sometimes I'll come up with immediate tags as soon as I wake up of jokes I've already had that I didn't think about that my subconscious did. And that's the fun part. Most of the time what happens is, is I'm doing something innocuous like cleaning or doing the dishes. Yeah. Or, you oh know, yeah, that's just what I've like, said already. Look, looking through the internet, all of a sudden it, something pops in my head and I immediately put Hit it on you. a piece of paper. And then I keep all those papers together. And then I do a writing session. Like Wednesday nights are usually, okay, I mean, there's stand up. Yeah, I could do mics, I can do. If I'm not booked on a show though, I'd like to go to a bar or especially the improv and just sit in a corner and write. I love doing that. And I just will bang out everything that I need to get organized. And it helps me for the rest of the week. And then I do it and try to wow. do it again. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm very Virgo. I have a Tetris brain. So I like to kind of put things in. Sure. Blame astrology. It's not astrology. It's a video game. Oh, Tetris. Yes. <laughs> Tetris. <laughs> you said Virgo. Well, I am a Virgo in the sense that I only know my sign and we're very organized. You slid in Tetris and I told you it was like, that's yeah, yeah. astrology <laughs> term. Do you, what, what's your best advice for a writing process? Is uh, don't force things, but keep your brain kind of open. And if you do have something that comes up, you just got to immediately pull your car over or get out of the shower. I can't tell you the number of shower jokes I've lost because I didn't get out of the shower immediately. How many time, How many car jokes I've lost? Oh, I know. Like, I've talked about pulling over and writing yeah, them down. That's when yeah, it happens. Always when the, I'm driving. All the time. All the time. You just, as soon as it hits you, you got to pull over. And it may not pan out to anything, but you have to write it down. Yeah. Your brain will think of it eventually some other time. but You can paper though, right? My other piece of advice, always have a goddamn pen on you. Well, some people like to write on their phones. That's fine, but you always have to have a pen. I'm, I'm the same way, so. Always have to have a pen. Excellent advice, good insight. Yay. Please, Wendy, plug any of your stuff. But, I should say, plug all your stuff. Don't plug specific things. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you can that's follow. because of me, not her. You can follow me on Instagram and at Wendy Jean. Uh, that's J-E-A-N, not the male version. And there is another Wendy Wilkins in Los Angeles, but she's Australian. She also does real estate, so if you see a, a house for You're sale, totally plugging her right now. So. I know, Thank but you. it's not me. Still waiting. Still waiting to go up. Waiting. Oh, you scared me. I didn't know you were coming that way. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Folks, you remember Daniel Vargas? How's it going? How you doing? doing the writing process video Daniel so let's what's your what is your writing process in 5,000 words or less and what advice do you have don't do comedy would be my advice because it's hard uh, my writing process is uh, telling stories about my life and then whittling them down into jokes as I go you know you go tell it on stage with it you get sad and then you're like, okay, I need to say it in less words. And then you say it in less words, it gets a little bit more of a, a response, and then you do it again until it stops hurting. Okay. Didn't you tell me once that you don't write things down, you try them on stage first, and if they're funny, then you write it down? Sort of. What I'll do is I'll try it in a social setting first. Oh, you like to test jokes on real people? Yes. Oh, Daniel's one of those. Well, what advice do you have? Stick to it and don't beat yourself up for not being funny initially. 
the joke is probably funny, you just need to find what's funny about it. That would be my advice. But also, I don't know anything. I dropped out of high school. Don't listen to this me. This is stand-up comedy, Daniel. You have to pretend you know stand-up comedy. All right. I, I know what it works, sort of, for me. That's about it. You've seen my writing process and how much work I do. Tell the people what you think. Is it too much or no? Dude, the way you do it is a bit obsessive. You're OCD. You have like notebooks on notebooks. You have jokes that you have rewritten in notebooks on every set that you did at this spot. You're insane. I've shown you my process, right? Yes. Okay, so would you want to try that process? Do you think it would help you? Maybe it would help me. <laughs> <laughs> you can be honest, dude. Tell May the truth. Probably not, no. Because it's it a lot would, of work, it, right? It's, it, it would make me neurotic and scared. Oh, I it, see, that's not what, that's not what I want. I'm just saying that's what it would make me. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad I asked you. Plug your stuff. At the Tuna Can Dan on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> All right. Going up here pretty soon. Got to get in the zone. Got to get ready. Wait for a few hours. What time is it now? We, I got here about just 8.30. It's just about 11.30 now. So yeah, three hour wait. That's pretty, pretty huge. I'm number 19 on the list. Well, I'm gonna work on some of these jokes. What are they again, Mikey? So you can be remember, off market, war black, overdose, and follow nightmares. I'm gonna record this shit. We're gonna talk about it afterwards. It kind of sucks because since the room is dying, I don't know how good reception my jokes are get. Look at these comics out here being loud. Out here. All right, to the jokes. Sorry, Park is impossible. You can't do it. Uh, but I, I guess I kind of get it, you know. The magic tea cups, they do have worked in than I have music. You know, that, that, that kind of makes sense to me. Give it up for Mikey McKernan, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Hey, keep it going for Ryan Salmo, everybody. Yeah. One of the best open mics in town, one of the, one of the longest open mics in town. It seriously is. Yeah, don't <laughs> forget your baggage up here. Okay? <laughs> my favorite thing to follow on social media is my nightmares. <laughs> Boo, ah, ah. I'm really happy to announce that I'm off the market. What? Woo. I didn't mean anybody. I just, <laughs> I just took myself off the market. <laughs> I'm not valuable to any of these women. Just went on a job interview. I wore all black to pay respects to my free time. <laughs> I'm actually really scared to get rich, okay? You can overdose on bills. <laughs> Boo. Ah, ah. I like being single as a guy and going to airports because I felt like they're looking out for our sex lives. Please report any unattended packages. I'm the only one who thinks airports are the best wingman. <laughs> Boo! Ah, oh. I'm so glad I'm recording this for the internet. <laughs> Give it up for my two friends who said they're gonna watch me tonight. Good to see you guys. <laughs> they're really big Harry Potter fans. They're wearing invisibility cloaks. <laughs> That's I had to look at my phone for one more. That was it. I had one more I had to work on. I do a vlog, okay? And I told myself this is the joke I'm gonna work on and I almost forgot it. Do it. Uh, this is my art. <laughs> I knew I wasn't gonna be, an, I, really, I wish I was an artist. I knew I wasn't gonna be an artist in high school when I tried to draw my girlfriend's face in art class. She hated it. And that was the first time I was ever art broken. <laughs> It's a lot of fun, because right now there's not a lot of confidence in these new bits. So it's a lot of awkwardness. And I, I don't like it, but I have to. I have to be here. <laughs> All right. Actually went a little bit better than I thought it was gonna go. This one is a longer set. I think it was about eight minutes. I didn't look at my recorder to see. I don't know how many handful of jokes I had to work on. It was maybe a minute and a half. Having tiny bits, you don't fill as much time. That's always one of the challenges to my stand-up. I almost forgot our broken joke. It went pretty well. I only think it went well because I faked the boo-ha. And also, I didn't say it as properly as I wanted to because I forgot about it and you know, this is the thing about working on new jokes. There's no confidence in them. So you're trying to figure out the wording and 
I should have looked at my notes and said it word for word. Overdose was all right. Off the market and wore black, I enjoyed it. I kind of set them a little too fast. And then follow my nightmares. I just, if there's one thing advice that you shouldn't be doing, but I did it anyways. You do not open with a brand new joke. Nope, you don't. That's why riffing is good, but opening with a brand new joke never works. But I just went for it because for one, that's one of my newest jokes I haven't said on stage at all. So I was excited to get it going. Plus I want to be like, get all your new jokes out. So you don't, you know, you won't forget them. And of course I had to go and look at my phone to remember our broken. All right. The process. There it is. I hope I explained it clearly as it is in my brain. That's another night in the YouTube books of Stand Up Adventure Vlogs with your host, Mikey McKernan. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you guys. Really, seriously, if you have any questions about stand up comedy, please leave them down below. Process, writing, I am an open book. Hit me up on Instagram. I love chatting about comedy. People send me DMs because they've heard about me wherever they heard about me from. I talk to everybody. I want to help out younger comics. I don't mind it. I'm not teaching classes. It's none of that. Go to the open mics. That's the best. There's no teachers there. Everybody's the teacher. They're just, who's doing it the best? Just write and perform and have as much fun as you can. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you have, thank you. If you want to follow me on Instagram, link down below. I sell merchandise, link down below. My website for dates, link down below. Really do appreciate this. You coming this far with me on this journey. Hope you learned something. Hope you got inspired. And I hope you don't do stand-up comedy. <laughs> I hope you do whatever you want with your life. But I hope you were entertained. One love. So if you guys want to see you not laughing on the internet, please look me up on YouTube, please. <laughs>